Good day, everyone. Bob M, the oxygen farmer. Um, this video is uh, a bit of a dog's breakfast. It's uh, all over the place. Uh, hopefully, I can edit it into some semblance of uh, a logical sequence for people to follow. Uh, but bear with me and. Uh, discover uh, the six wise men. Good day everyone, Bob M, the Octogen Farmer here. Now I just thought I'd have a little bit of a rant and a rave um, about life, the universe and everything. The um, thing that comes to mind first is a quote by Rudyard Kipling, which is, I keep six men who counsel me. And their names are who, what, when, where, how, and why. So let me start with who. Um, I'm 60 something, 67 this year. Um, I was. Uh, I recently retired. I'm about to move to uh, a block of dirt um, in uh, the Great Dividing Range in uh, New South Wales. I'll end up being about three or four hours inland from Sydney um, and about uh, two and a half hours from where I am at the moment. Now, um, who am I? Um, I am the offspring of a couple of people who were born in the 1920s. They were born between the wars. They were born so that they were children during the Great Depression of the 1930s and the 1929 stock market crash. So they had a life of being frugal by necessity. Now, my grandfather um, on... Uh, my mother's side uh, was a postmaster and he um, was uh, reasonably well off up until the uh, Depression. Um, and he had a, um, a block in the suburbs of Melbourne that was fairly large and... Um, so he had a large market garden. Um, well, it wasn't a market garden per se. He didn't actually sell. Um, but it was the equivalent of a market garden in that it supplied uh, his immediate family and those around him. And uh, I suppose that's where I get some of my... Um, altruistic values from it's in the time of abundance in terms of preserving and things like that you also um, share with those around you and those who have need um, my uh, grandfather on my father's side um, came out as um, a uh, motor mechanic for this newfangled high-tech thing called the um, uh, motor vehicle, uh, the internal combustion engine. And so that uh, was uh, his claim to fame. And my grandmother, uh, the woman that he married, um, came out as the housemaid to... Uh, one of the members of parliament uh, in New South Wales at the time. Um, and we're talking um, 
the 1900s, at the turn of the century before World War I. Um, so, um, and it was um, from uh, chauffeuring, chauffeuring someone uh, to uh, a dinner um, that uh, my grandfather met my grandmother at the house of the parliamentarian. Um, and uh, he, he died when I was um, fairly young. He was... Um, living in the hills of Gippsland at the time. He had bought a farm and um, they had a dairy farm there and he was walking up the hill and he had a heart attack and didn't make it to the gate. So um, that was uh, his story. Um, the uh, My other grandparent um, was uh, a bit of a fitness freak and he used to uh, do competitive long distance uh, bike riding um, but other than that that's a little bit of a tangent and off from the story um, the what the what I'll jump ahead from the who for a minute. I might jump back to it later and tell you more about me. Um, but the what is um, basically um, about what to do with food, how to get food, how to um, preserve food, how to store it, how to use it, how to cook it, um, and there is a fairly big uh, family tradition of get-togethers and big meals. Um, so basically, in current uh, terminology, we're talking farm to table. Um, and in terms of homesteading and in terms of um, Shed Wars 21 down under, Southern Hemisphere, we're talking um uh, getting your plants started and harvesting that letting it nurturing it good um, um good horticulture and uh, then harvesting at its peak um, weather permitting of course now um it doesn't always work out and that's uh part of the challenge of it all uh, but it is better for it to challenge it now rather than when uh, the proverbial hits the fan um, and I'll just jump off on a side bar here of the when um, and in terms of when will it hit the fan nobody knows will it hit the fan uh, tomorrow, I don't think so. Next week, I don't think so. Next month, mm, increasing probability. Next year, increasing probability again. The year after that, increasing probability once again. The longer it goes, the more likely it is to happen because the system, which is based on growth and the current hyperinflation and um uh governments devaluing the the income of um of the average person is uh is doomed to failure in the long term but are we near the end of the long term i have no idea uh, I am optimistic to think that we still have um, quite some time before um, there is any real problem. However, I have for the past 10 years um, 
been getting myself organised in terms of um, it's just on 10 years ago that I bought my 20 acres. Um, it's called the Oxygen Farm because um, about uh, a bit over 17 acres of it is um, just trees and so they produce enough oxygen for a few hundred people um, each year and uh, there's only one of me. Um, so that's my contribution to the planet. Um, the So about 10 years ago, I purchased the, this land. Uh, it's reasonably inaccessible. Um, the water's going to be a problem. The power's going to be a problem. The shelter's going to be a problem. Um, growing food's going to be a problem. Everything's going to be a problem, but that is uh the issue it is all about problem solving and overcoming and creating that abundance uh in an earlier video and i don't know whether i can do it but i will try to see if i can um put a link up there to um a video that i did about um the food crisis um we have Six out of ten people, as we speak, unable to provide enough food for themselves and their families. Um, and that's a bit of a horror story. If, uh, when I go into the supermarket this week, um, because I'm one of the privileged ones, I still have funds from my savings um, to... Uh, allow me to go shopping but what I do notice is that even though uh, inflation is supposedly running in the single digits that the uh, many of the items have gone up in 10 20 30 40 and even 50 percent in some cases um, and so it's uh, a concern to me that uh, long term we're going to need uh, something to uh, buffer us from that. And so I do uh, what is now called prepping. But when I was growing up, um, it was what everybody did. Um, I'm from a working class background and... Uh, where we um the thing yeah it's the things we take for granted now um i did a video recently on freezing eggs um when i was preschool we lived in a house in uh the outskirts of town um near my father's work um and it uh, it had this beautiful timber ice chest and the ice man would come around and deliver ice. Um, and I'm not sure whether that was once a week or twice a week, but uh, um, there would be this huge block of ice that we would attack with a um, an ice pick. And uh, that is what, kept um, things cool. That was our refrigeration at the time. Um, a few years later, not too many years later, because we were still in the same house, there was much ado about a um, fairly conventional looking uh, bit of white goods in the form of a kerosene powered refrigerator. Um, and then it was only a couple of years after that when we were in another house that we actually had the electric uh, refrigerator, um, which had a small uh, little freezer compartment for making ice cubes. Um, but our, our cooking was on a wood stove. Um, and in terms of recreation and stuff we had a uh, little uh, 
gas bottle with a cooker on it and um, another one that had a lantern on it that uh, used a silk um, silk mantle um, that uh, would uh, give us the light in the tent when we went camping. That's um, the who, the what, the when. The where I have said is going to be uh, up in the hills. Um, we don't really have mountains here in Australia compared to other countries. Um, but uh, in relative terms, I would live on a mountaintop. Um, it is... Um, 1,750 metres above sea level. That is about 2,550 feet above sea level, I believe. It means I'm going to have to add five pounds of pressure to the pressure canner for um, preserving things, um, which throws me off onto the tangent of uh, memories of my mother using a water bath canner and um the big also the big cast iron but it was enameled it was enameled on the outside and inside um but it was cast iron so that it, once you got it up to temperature it was fairly stable with that temperature um and that was the, the uh, jam making um uh, vessel and it's one of the reasons why I purchased my stainless steel ones is um, it's basically the same shape because it helps um, with getting the uh, excess moisture out of whatever jam or preserve you're boiling down cooking down so in terms of pressure canning and canning low acid foods, um, that is something new for me. Um, but I started that somewhere between five and eight years ago. I don't know exactly. It's uh, uh, probably more than five years because some of the because some of the um, stew that I have in uh, pint jars is um, five years old now and still good um, and uh, the video of the chili that I made is um, uh, I've only got a couple of jars of that left and I think that's interesting that I've um, eaten more chili than I have with the stew I've been holding on to that extra protein for for an emergency. Um, fortunately, that hasn't happened. Anyway, so in terms of, in terms of why I do this, it's because I'm preparing for potential hard times. I've spent the last five years of my working life building up a pantry that was going to be at least five years of food now in terms of variety it's very very ordinary and i'm sure i will be sick of it uh, if i only eat the dry goods in terms of the rice and beans um, but uh, in terms of being able to supplement that with um, the um, eggs from the chickens and meat from chickens and um, having a freezer full of uh, chickens, then uh, that will give me some variety. Um, there are still some gaps that I would like to fix, but uh, we'll get onto that soon enough. Um, and that's probably in the next couple of months. Um, I spend a lot of time watching um, a guy called Dave uh, from Prepping Essentials in the UK. Um, uh, 
So I'll put a link in the description for his channel. Get over there and uh, like and subscribe because he is he's uh, walking the talk. He's doing it and he is emphasising the need to just do it. Just try. Um, yeah, there is no try. Just do it. So, is there an impending disaster? Who knows? That is uh, way above my pay grade, being able to predict that. Um, will it matter if there is uh, an impending disaster? Well, for me, for the first few years, no. For 60% of the people right now, definitely. For another 20%, maybe 25%, so 85% of the population are going to be catastrophized by not being able to feed themselves or their family. That will make um, city life uh, um, potentially more hazardous and um, one of the reasons why my isolated uh, hermit-like um, existence up on the mountain appeals to me. It will be um, potentially inaccessible to others um, and uh, uh, in terms of who do I share my abundance with? Well, I'll be storing most of it. And when I have contact with my neighbours, I have neighbours on um, three sides of me. Uh, and I will um, uh, share any excess with them quite willingly. Um, now... Now, the section that I haven't covered is the how. And basically, that is um, how do I live a more sustainable life? Well, the current terminology for it is regenerative agriculture. My block is in a natural organic balance with the way that the um, plants there grow, live out their life cycle, seed, get eaten um, and die and make the mulch. And so there on the top of the mountain I have got somewhere between uh, 6 and 12 inches of the richest, blackest uh, soil I have ever seen um, that is rich with earthworms. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, growing my veggies there. The other part of the how is without any uh, chemical fertiliser. I'm trying, in terms of a permaculture model, I'm trying for um, a closed system with zero uh, input, zero... Um, uh, um, well, not zero, minimal losses. Um, and uh, if anything, the positive gain so that I can produce more food than I can consume in one year. That remains to be seen. Wish me luck. Now, recently, there have been a few news reports um, talking about the Chinese government um, warning its citizens to prepare for a long-term emergency. Now, those pundits that follow um, China and Taiwan issues um, believe this to be a forewarning that China is preparing to um, 
reclaim Taiwan as its own. Um, from the Chinese point of view, uh, Taiwan was always part of uh, China. From the Taiwanese point of view, they uh, seceded many years ago and they are independent. The Americans, um, during uh, following the Second World War and their um, <clears throat> treaties, I suppose you'd call them, and um, support of the Taiwanese economy, uh, um, have uh, created this ongoing conflict so that um, issues in the South China Sea, uh, Taiwan, um, and just the whole fight between two potentially imperialist countries um, is on. But we're yet to see that. It could be that China is just forewarning people to prepare for a cold winter because it is a grand solar minimum. And these are the people that um, have the wisdom to um, prognosticate on the weather. And to the extent that during the Beijing Olympics, they uh, uh, manipulated the weather to uh, ensure that it didn't rain um, on Beijing during those days. Um, and um, to create weather patterns that diverted um, storms around the city. Pretty amazing, hey? Um, once upon a time, when I was a kid, these would have been conspiracy theories. Now, um, after the fact, um, most of the conspiracy theories that I grew up with, when I look into them, turn out to be fact. Um, so, um, is it true? Can it be done? The thing to do is keep an open mind, but at the same time be sceptical and do your own research. I'm starting to ramble, so I'm going to wrap this up now. Um, I, so, finally... Um, Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing your precious time with me. Um, if you liked it, click like. Uh, if you're not a regular here and just uh, happen to stumble onto the channel, please hit subscribe. Uh, um, I would like to create a bit of a community here of um, people that wish to discuss the issues of being self-reliant. Um, that want to talk about raising quail, that want to talk about raising chickens, um, about the um, joys and pitfalls of um, having your own flock of um, birds um, and uh, the dilemma that I have in terms of having my quail in cages and um, the uh, ethics of that, although that's what they did with them over 2,000 years ago from what I can determine from what's in the Bible. Um, they're a very traditional um, food. Um, anyway, like, share, subscribe, stay safe, um, and I'm not an expert on anything. Uh, I'm a jack of all trades, um, master of none, but working on it. And uh, it's all about learning. And uh, uh, any knowledge that I do have, I'm happy to share. Um, because the nice thing about knowledge is by sharing it, 
everybody grows uh, and nobody loses. Uh, in terms of my opinions, that's just what they are. In terms of what I put here on YouTube, uh, it's just what it is. Um, I have no politics in terms of left or right in that traditional sense. Um, if anything, I am probably a libertarian. Um, uh, I'm quite cynical about um, uh, an artificial division of left and right in politics and uh, um, believe that the system is so corrupt that uh, it doesn't really matter who you're voting for, it is only an illusion that you are um, being democratic uh, if in some way that is better than being uh, totalitarian. Um, I don't think totalitarianism is the way to go. Um, and that is another reason why I need to get to my block. Anyway, the reason that I said that little bit of a ramble is do your own research. I'm no expert on anything. Uh, if I put up a canning video, it's not there to say this is how it must be done. It is to show you this is how I do it and what I have been doing for that particular week or day. Um, and uh, um, do your own research. Be self-responsible. Um, and anybody that wants to get litigious and sue me, um, good luck, because I'm broke. <laughs> Uh, barely got enough to um, to uh, get through the next uh, several months um, and one trip to the solicitor would clean me out. Um, so uh, there would be nothing left. Um, and uh, yeah, be self-responsible. Grow your own food. Take care of yourself and those around you. Stay safe, everyone.